Yo, what's up everybody? Jumping here. Today I want to show you guys an amazing weapon build for the Ranger. This is actually going to be a blast build for the most part. And I'm going to be using, in my opinion, one of the best weapons in the entire game. And this build can actually work really well on all the other javelins. You just have to figure out ways to make it work for you for that javelin. Now, I'm going to tell you all the ways to buff this weapon if you have it. And it is just amazing. It's really, really good, especially on GM2, I think. Because on GM2, you will just blast through everything with this. It is insane. And on GM3, it is effective. It can hold up. And it will actually do some really great damage. I'm going to have some gameplay. It's going to be on GM3. So you can actually see how it does perform on GM3. So let's go ahead and talk about it. The weapon that I'm referring to is the Divine Vengeance. This thing is a beast. It fires a four round burst. Now the bullet damage is not bad. It does like 5,000 a headshot. If you get nothing but headshots, that's going to be 20,000. But the main damage is going to come from the effect. And that is the fire explosion. Every three weak point hits, you will cause that explosion. You can just get that to trigger an unlimited amount of times if you just keep hitting headshots. So that is one of the reasons I think this weapon is so good. Is that if you are hitting headshots, you're just getting an explosion, explosion, explosion especially against certain boss enemies. They're really easy to actually get the weak point and you can just do a ton of explosions and the explosions have AOE and they will do crazy damage and they scale because it is an effect. So if you have a really high power level, this weapon will actually become stronger. Now with this build, I'm going to show you can mimic this with Masterworks. Just know that the explosion is going to be a lot weaker if you are a masterwork compared to being legendary, but it is still a fantastic weapon. I mainly like this though, whenever I'm doing strongholds on GM2, I normally will run strongholds on GM2, I cannot be bothered with GM3, and I think that this weapon is amazing for doing that. I can speed run through it so quick, the AoE explosions are so strong, I will one shot practically everything, it is crazy. Now, the gameplay I'm going to be showing will be GM3, so keep that in mind, but it is viable for GM3, but I will definitely say that I think that it is primarily viable if you are actually at the legendary status for your class. So, let's talk about different ways to actually buff this weapon. Now, the first way I'm going to show is going to actually come from my second weapon. If you can boost elemental damage or fire damage, that will boost the damage of the fire explosion. So, this secondary weapon I have on has elemental damage on it, and it also has general damage on it. That is another way that you can boost the damage of the effect. The other way that you can actually boost it is with blast damage. So, the Ranger is almost perfect for this because the Ranger has a really good blast component, and that is going to be Victor's Resolve. This is going to increase blast damage by 50%, but it's going to lower impact damage by minus 20%. Now, normally, what I would recommend doing is equipping this, and there's also an impact one, and in the end, you'll get 30% impact damage and 30% blast damage. You don't want that with this particular build. You just want the blast damage, so do not use the impact damage one. Just go for the 50% blast damage. It will boost the gun, and it is amazing. Now, another way that you can actually really buff this weapon is actually with your consumables. You want to use the fire sigil consumable. You want to double stack it. What I mean is that you can actually go ahead and put on the purple consumable for 30%, the blue consumable for 20%. You could put on the green one for 10%, but I normally would probably recommend putting something else on, combo damage, or even the assault rifle sigil, mainly to get more ammo if you're having problems with ammo with this weapon. That is a fantastic way of getting more ammo. But that will not actually boost the damage. Weapon damage, assault rifle damage, things like that will not boost the actual explosion damage. Only blast, elemental, fire, which is elemental, but they are classified as two different things. And then finally, general damage will actually buff that fire explosion. Now let me quickly show you the rest of this build. The first thing I'm using here is a frag grenade. This has general damage on it. That's great. This would be better if I actually had some elemental damage on it as well, but I don't. So it's whatever, but it also has 100% charges. I mainly will use this to help me get my ultimate and detonate combos because this is also somewhat of a combo build. 
I will actually use it to do a lot of combos. And I will spam my ultimate a lot. That's one thing that the Ranger is really good at if you're using the frag grenade. Next up for the assault launcher, I'm actually using tactical onslaught, which is the acid. Acid with this is amazing because if you can apply acid, the explosion will be buffed and it will do a lot more damage. So I really do like using acid with this. I'm using one that has 29% general damage. It has 100% charges. Once again, this would be even better if it had elemental damage on it, but it doesn't. So that is a real bummer. Next up, I am not using support gear because I'm trying to buff this as much as possible. Once patch 1.4 comes out, you're going to be forced to pretty much use support gear, and that will potentially nerf this version of the build I have right now. I hope they will address the scaling in the future, but we will see on how that goes. But for the components, I'm using tip of the spear. I am doing combos. This is a way to get my health back, so definitely want to use that. This one I have actually has acid effect on it, which is nice. I have a universal mod on. This is soften blows. It's a really nice universal mod. I wish I could have gotten another one, though, that will increase general damage by 50% for picking up ammo packs or health packs. I don't know which one it is. I wish I would have got that one, but this one has 30% damage on it, which is really good because, once again, we want general damage if we can get it. But another way to dramatically buff this build is to get a legendary component or even a masterwork universal component that will come with blast damage or elemental damage on it. General damage is nice, but you get a much bigger buff from blast damage or from elemental for this weapon. Next up, we're using General's Favor. This is just going to increase our assault launcher recharge. After that, we have the Badge of Devastation. This is actually really good just because of the effect. I do like it because we're actually using a weapon. Anytime we get a large hit streak, that means 10. And really what that means is that you just need to hit 10 bullets of your gun on an enemy. It will actually give you some of your ultimate charge back. It's not very much, but you can see it when it occurs. And it is nice. It will help you get your ultimate back a lot faster. The main reason I like this one, though, is because it has 43% luck on it and that is always good. This one took me forever to get, and this is such a crucial thing, at least for the Ranger version of this build, and that is Elemental Ops. I do not like the descriptions on this, but this will increase fire damage by 20%. It also gives you heat capacity, fire resistance, and it will also allow you to apply your elemental effects 20% better, I guess. But the fire damage is what we're going for here because this weapon will be buffed by elemental damage, or fire damage in that case, and this will give us fire damage. And I've already talked about Victor's Resolve, which will give us blast damage. So these are the components you want. Now, if I had to replace one, I would probably replace General's Favor. I could potentially replace Tip of the Spear and also the Badge of Devastation. I could replace all of them with different universal ones if I had those universals with blast damage on it or elemental damage because that would actually make me a super glass cannon but that would dramatically up the damage of this weapon so that is something to look out for like i said if you don't have the legendaries which i understand if you don't then you can always make this a masterwork version it's a lot easier to craft that or to actually get what you need for that and trust me it is very good just know that it's probably not going to be super viable on gm3 if it's masterwork where GM2, it will be a cakewalk, and you will do some crazy, crazy damage. Now, there is something I want to talk about. If you want to skip my little rant here, go ahead. I will put a timestamp in the description. Just click on that. I will also leave a comment. Click on that time code, and it will take you right to the gameplay if you want to see what this weapon setup can do on GM3. It is really good. But something I have to talk about is the scaling system now patch 1.4 is coming out and once that comes out i'm actually really happy about it there's a lot of good things in it there's some bad like the chest that's just awful for sure but they have said that they're not actually going to address the scaling issue right now they will be fixing the whole i'm going to remove my support gear and it's going to mess with the division and not the game it's just the way that they calculate power and it, the way they do it is just stupid I don't want to get into it, but if you don't know about it, it's stupid. So just look it up. 
But the point is, is that there's a big problem with scaling, but this is something I have noticed like no one's talking about, and it kind of shocks me. That is, the weapons and the gear needs to scale just like the combos, just like the melees, just like the ultimates, and the effects, because all those scale, and those are all fine right now. If you're playing GM2 or GM3, you will notice a huge difference in your damage the higher power level you are. But when you're using like a really good weapon, I'm talking about a weapon that's legendary. I'm talking about a weapon that has a god rule on it, but this weapon doesn't have an effect on it. You will notice that weapon sucks. Like in comparison to the things I just mentioned, the weapons are trash. That's just the reality of it. Now, if you're playing GM1, it's not a problem. If you're playing GM2, it's a problem, but it's not as big of a problem. But if you're playing GM3, it is a huge problem. It's going to take you forever to kill an enemy with even a god roll weapon because the weapons are just not doing enough damage if they don't have an effect on it, like the Divine Vengeance or the Thunderbolt. It just takes you forever, and the gear is the same. There's a lot of gear in this game, too, that will require you to kill an enemy to trigger its effect, and those are absolutely the worst because I can hit something with my frag grenade, for example, and I will tickle it on GM2 and GM3. It will do nothing, basically, to that enemy, and I'm hitting it for, like, 20,000 damage, and it does nothing because the enemy has like 200,000 health or millions of health if you're talking about certain enemies that are legendary or elite. 20,000 damage does nothing to it. And that is a huge problem. Now, if I set it up for a combo, then it does big damage. In fact, it will just flat out kill them. But that's the combo doing the damage. That is not the gear doing the damage. And this is a real problem, I think, for Storms. Because storms don't really have the strongest combos in the game. If you're like a max power storm, the combos are okay, I guess. But it's going to take you multiple combos to actually kill an enemy compared to like a ranger, which will just one combo it. If you have the right setup for a colossus, you can practically one combo everything with the colossus. And the interceptor has melee, which scales. It has effects with the melee, which scales. The storm's biggest damage it can get, honestly, right now is the ultimate. The ultimate can do the damage. Everything else, pretty weak. But that is mainly because prior to 1.3, when they kind of introduced this whole new scaling system, the storm was actually prior pretty good. Like if you had like a really god roll piece of gear, you could actually like go and do crazy damage to the enemies. You have AoE, you're just taking them out, no problem. Now it's like, oh man. You're doing like 20, 30,000 damage with your ability. That's just not enough. That's not going to cut it for GM3 especially, but it doesn't really even cut it for GM2. So you have to rely on things that do scale like combos, but like I said, the Storm's combos are just really not that good compared to the Ranger and Colossus and things like that. I definitely think that they have to allow the gear and the weapons to scale. Now you might say, wait a minute. Well, what about something like the Divine Visions or the Thunderbolt? Because they also have effects that will scale. If you buff their damage by a lot, and you're talking about instead of the gun hitting for like 10,000 a weak point hit, it's hitting for now 50,000 a weak point hit. Okay, let's say that's the case. And on top of that, it's going to potentially get its effect. Well, in every game, there are best weapons. And these weapons will probably continue to be the best weapons because they have huge damage. That's fine, but I just want it so that if I'm using like a really, really good shotgun, I want that shotgun to be able to be used effectively on GM2 and GM3, where right now it just isn't good. It's not good at all, and I just think that's a big problem. I really hope that they will address this issue, and of course, the other big scaling problem is I definitely want them to not divide the number. I want them to just go off of the maximum power. That's it. That would be great but i wanted to say that because i've been saying this for a long time now and i just haven't really heard anyone talking about that the weapons and the gear they also need to scale maybe not as much as what the melee did or what the ultimate did or the combo maybe not as much but they do need to scale up because as of right now they are really weak for the higher difficulties Alrighty, guys now let's go ahead and get into the gameplay like i said before this is going to be on gm3 but normally, I really love this setup for GM2 Strongholds. It is 
a whole nother world. It is so good. It one shots everything in GM2. Where on GM3 it doesn't, but it still does crazy damage for GM3. Alrighty guys, well here's gonna be the gameplay. Now the first thing I want to talk about is just a couple things I didn't really get to talk about in the beginning. The first thing I want to bring up is the role that you kind of want to get, if possible, on the Divine Vengeance. If you remember, I actually have weapon damage on this, which is nice, but because bullets don't scale, it's really not needed. I think you're better off if you can get elemental damage, or if you can get general damage. I think those are much better stats than actually just getting weapon damage as of right now, because bullets don't scale. They will up the overall damage of the gun, which is nice, but in reality, I would just prefer... To actually just get more explosion damage that's what i want the gun explodes it kills everything in an aoe it's great now one of the stats i definitely think that you do want to get if possible is actually recoil reduction now mine actually has recoil hip reduction it's like 58 percent and this thing does not kick at all if i hip fire it so you're going to notice all i'm doing is hip firing it that's really going to help your aim if you can get recoil reduction because this thing does kick and that can mess you up when you're trying to get headshots. Now, I would have preferred it if I would have got recoil aim, which is when you aim down sights compared to hip. But I do like it. I actually do like hip firing this weapon. I think that's completely fine. But that is one of the stats I would definitely say you kind of want to get if possible because it's going to help your aim. And it's going to make it more consistent for getting those explosions nonstop. Now, when it comes to this weapon, another thing I want to bring up is that there are a couple enemies that this weapon does struggle against. The first enemy would be the storms. Any storm enemy you encounter, if they have the shield, you cannot actually headshot them through the shield. Now, some enemies you can. Like, in fact, most of the shielded enemies you can. Like, all the scars you can. In fact, even, like, the enforcers, all you have to do with them is just aim at their big shield and that will just constantly trigger the explosion. It's incredibly overpowered. It's great. If there's a mob around them, you'll kill everything. That is awesome. But when it comes to like scouts and when it comes to hunters, which they actually have like your normal shields, you will actually be able to headshot them and they will explode even if they have the shield. Now against storms, it really doesn't work that way. You actually have to take the shield down first and the storms have a lot of shields. So keep that in mind. That's a big problem for this gun. The other enemy, which is a big problem as well, is actually the Dominion Brutes. It's the same issue where you cannot headshot them when they have their shield up. Once their shield is down, though, they are pretty easy to headshot. They have armor. They generally die really quickly, but you got to get that shield down first. And one of the big problems with the Storms and the Brutes, if they are actually a Storm version, if you're trying to use Lightning like on the Ranger, I normally try to melee them, but if they are the Storm version... They are resistant to lightning damage. So I'm kind of screwed in that case. And that is a big, big bummer when that happens. Now, the other enemy that you have to watch out for because this weapon is horrible against this enemy is the digester from the scorpions. Just because you cannot weak point hit them at all. Now, the other scorpions like the workers and even the soldiers, you can actually get headshots on them and blow them up. But the digesters, I have to pretty much rely on doing combos on them because I am not going to headshot them and it's going to take me forever to kill them by body shotting them with a weapon on GM 2 or 3. It's just is awful. So those are the enemies that this weapon is really not that good against, but everything else it is amazing against. It will just absolutely wreck them. Now when it comes to the other javelins, I do think that this weapon is really good on all the javelins. I think that the Storm probably has the most potential besides the Ranger just because the Storm gets blast damage, the Storm gets elemental damage, and also fire damage from the components. The Colossus will get fire damage and some blast damage, and the Interceptor just gets a lot of general damage, and all that is good. So this weapon is good on every Javelin, but I do feel like it is absolutely the best on the Ranger just due to the high amount of blast damage you can get, plus you get the fire damage. And that just really makes this extremely powerful on the Ranger. Now, when it comes to the actual damage numbers I'm getting, if you're actually watching, against the red bars, I'm generally hitting them for about 100,000 with the acid on. Against the armor targets, fire does more damage to armor. I'm hitting them for 125,000. My friend Zombie is debuffing them with the Colossus, and when he does that, I can hit crazy damage 
and yeah it's a lot of fun especially on gm2 you can just steamroll that no problem one shot everything in the strongholds it is amazing Alrighty guys, that's going to do it for the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it and this has helped. If it has, will you please like the video for me? Be sure to subscribe for future Anthem videos. And I really do hope that everyone has a very nice day and peace out.